Hi, and welcome to another fun-filled episode of PhD at Living. My wife loves her some Fixer Upper. Me? Well, I don't like watching the same episode for the third time in a week. Anyway, I was watching Chip Gaines, that lovable goofball, pouring concrete, and Devin brain went off, and I started wondering, wait, what the hell's concrete made of? And how does it work? Well, if you've ever wondered those questions too, come on in. As it turns out, concrete is just a two-part mixture of aggregates and cement. Important distinction here. Concrete and cement are not the same thing. Cement is a part of concrete, so the word's not interchangeable. The aggregates are just small stones, pieces of gravel, stuff like that. Cement is where things get interesting. And by interesting, we all know that means chemistry. <laughs> The trouble is, there's a whole lot more chemistry in dirt than I thought there would be. <sighs> Why does it always have to be a rabbit hole? Oh well. Let's go to the board. Cement is a collection of materials that, when reacted with water in a process called hydration, forms a very hard, brittle material. The easiest way to find out what cement is, is to find out what cement is made from. Most cement starts with limestone and clay. The limestone is in the form of calcium carbonate, this inorganic compound shown here. We're dealing with metals and polyatomic anions, so we're definitely in inorganic chemistry. Aside from physical chemistry, inorganic is by far my worst sub-branch of chemistry itself. Now luckily for you, we're dealing with pretty basic stuff here. And I'll be damned if I'm ever going to do a point group again! Sorry. Right, calcium carbonate. The other piece is the clay, which is made up of aluminum silicates. Now that name muddies the waters a bit because it's not just aluminum and silicon and oxygen. There's a combination of a bunch of stuff in there, but it's beyond the scope of the video, so I'm going to simplify that and just say that the aluminum silicates are composed of aluminum oxides that are in a similar crystal lattice as a bunch of silicon dioxide. So Al2O3 aluminum oxide, SiO2 silicon dioxide. These are the big two heavy hitters in cement manufacturing, but you can round out given formulations in something called Portland cement with a bunch of sand, which is primarily silicon dioxide, just to jack up that silicon dioxide content, and something called mill scale, which is a byproduct of steel manufacturing, as far as I can understand, and is made up of a bunch of kind of like rust characteristics, where we have iron 2, iron 3, and iron 2 slash 3 oxide. Okay? Now we take all of our constituents and we heat them together at a very high temperature, talking like 1500 C or so. The first thing that happens is the calcium carbonate releases a CO2 carbon dioxide molecule and becomes calcium oxide. That calcium oxide reacts with the silicon dioxide in the clay and in the sand and becomes calcium silicates. That's what we're looking for and that's the molecule that's the workhorse in the cement and concrete to follow. The aluminum oxides and the clay and the iron oxides and the mill scale serve to lower the sintering temperature of this reaction. Sintering meaning we have all these solid components fusing together without any of them having to melt in the interim. At the end of the day, the aluminum oxides and the iron oxides don't really do anything for the strength of the concrete, but again, they're in there to lower the sintering temperature. When all these things fuse together, they form big balls called clinkers. The clinkers are then ground down in a mill to a very fine dust, and finally, some calcium sulfate is added, also known as gypsum powder. And this is your basic composition of a cement. Now let's get into the advanced stuff. As we talked about before in that sintering process, the first step of the reaction is that calcium carbonate losing a carbon dioxide, CO2, and becoming calcium oxide. Then that calcium oxide reacts with the silicon dioxide in the clay and the sand to form calcium silicates. There are two big ones that cause the hardening in the cement and further concrete, and they're known as allite and bellite. You can draw them a slightly different way, but I like doing it like this, where allite is three calcium oxides and a silicon dioxide, whereas bellite is two calcium oxides and one silicon dioxide. So this is the easiest way to tell the difference. So let's look at the reaction between allite and bellite and water to get that hydrated hard product. Writing these reactions took the entire width of the board, so now I'm sitting on the floor. See how much I care about you? 
I've rewritten the molecular formulas for the allyte and the bellite from how we saw them a few seconds ago, just to make it easier to see the atom economy and follow everything through this reaction setup. The allyte on top, the bellite on bottom, we're reacting with water and we get this hydration product. This triple calcium oxide, double silicon dioxide, triple hydrate. In all of our discussions here, this is the thing that actually causes all the hardening, the increased strength, the reacting of that cement and concrete at the end of the day. Our other product over here, this calcium hydroxide, is known as Portlandite. The allyte, the reaction on top, causes the quick hardening of the cement, where the bellite reaction takes a little longer and causes the slow but increased hardening in that final cement slash concrete product. Time for the grab bag! Grab bag! Grab bag! Incidentally, you can get mortar instead of concrete with cement as well. You just have to mix it with much finer particle sized stuff as opposed to the larger stones and gravel that you'd see in concrete. The grinding of the clinkers to break them down into that dust cement final product also creates very specific particle sizes and surface areas. Higher surface area leads to faster hardening cement and concrete. Asphalt is a whole different ballgame from concrete. It uses an extremely viscous petroleum-based liquid called bitumen. You heat the bitumen up to like 300 degrees Fahrenheit or so and it actually has some flow. Mix it with some other stuff, lay it down, pack it hard and flat and dense, let it cool and bang, you got yourself some asphalt. Ever wonder why rebar is added to concrete to make it stronger? As it turns out, concrete is extremely compressively strong. So if we take it and we press down on the concrete, very, very, very high strength. But in tension, that is pulling the concrete, it doesn't really have all that much strength. So the rebar made from stainless steel has very good tensile strength. So when you put the rebar and the concrete together, you have a perfect blend of that tensile and compressive strength. How does a cement mixer prevent the concrete from setting up if it's already mixed with the water? Well, that big spinning bowl on the back prevents everything from reacting and setting up because it keeps the materials moving. It's really that simple. Super awesome bonus round. Did you know there's a thing called cement chemist notation? If you remember my gigantic allyte bellite reactions, it's a way for the cement chemist to abbreviate all those different oxides and stuff in a way that makes it easier to see those reactions. I've been a chemist professionally for almost a decade and I have never heard of this. Check it out. Something like calcium oxide turns into C. Silicon dioxide turns into S. Aluminum oxide turns into A. And our iron oxide turns into, you guessed it, F. So now my reactions of the allyte, which has three calcium oxides and one silicon dioxide, which we could write one of two ways, simply becomes C3S. Not some weird tricarbon monosulfide covalent bond. No, it's the cement chemist's way to write allyte. This is ridiculous and it just shortens the reactions and I find it just absolutely fascinating that I never knew this existed. Let's use our new cement chemist notation and find out why the calcium sulfate is needed in the cement. One of the clinker phases in that sintering reaction is tricalcium aluminate, C3A. That reacts with water the same way the allyte and the bellite do in the normal concrete reaction and creates a hydrated product, CAH. This whole thing is bad for two reasons. The first is that it reacts very quickly and the second is that it reacts very exothermically, both faster and hotter than any of the other hydration reactions that we're looking at there. In the presence of sulfate, however, that C3A particle, when it reacts with the water, instead of creating CAH, creates a product called etringite, which we'll abbreviate AFT. This etringite on the outside of the C3A particle passivates it and prevents any of the rest of the C3A from reacting with water and going through that CAH reaction. So the sulfate's in there to extend the workable lifetime of the concrete. That's pretty cool, huh? Well, that's the chemistry of concrete, something I never entertained an idea I'd ever be doing a video on. The real question is whether I'd have thought of it if my wife hadn't been watching Fixer Upper for like nine hours straight. Yeah, best not to think about that one. See you later. Rico, you know what to do.